So there's two categories that men typically find themselves in. And no, it's not alpha or beta, as most of us probably think. Actually, there was a man, his name was Henry Thoreau, and he said it probably the best that most men lead lives of quiet desperation when they go to their grave with their song still in them. And the reason that he said that is because there are a lot of men that are living life on accident instead of living life on purpose. What's the difference? Well, that's what we're going to be diving in today as we look at some different barriers, some different mindset shifts, and some different tactics that we can use as men to go from accidental living to being a man that lives on purpose. So if you're ready to learn, let's dive in. Hey, what's going on? This is Nick back with the Life Recreated channel, where it's all about the passion of helping men just like you to learn how to live in your purpose, to learn how to live in your power, and also to learn how to live in your God-given position. So if you're here for the first time, hit that subscribe button. So before I jump into this, I want to know from you, what are some of the challenges that you face as a man right now in the world that we're living in to be a man that's living on purpose? Drop a comment down below. I'm curious about it because I feel like one of the things that we struggle with as men oftentimes is how do we become men that are living on purpose rather than living on accident, which is what we're going to dive in today. So drop a comment down below. I want to hear what your thoughts are on how to become a man that's living on purpose rather than just living on accident. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to take a simple path on this video. I like to keep things simple because I'm a simple individual, right? Not too bright, but I know how to get from point A to point Z. On this topic today, we're going to start as if we were a man that was living on accident, meaning that life is happening to you, meaning that you know things aren't always going your way, meaning that you don't feel like you're living with some type of purpose in your life, right? So we're gonna go from being a man that's living on accident and we're gonna move through what it looks like in four easy steps for us to become a man that's living accidentally to being a man that's living purposefully and living with purpose, living in their power, and living in their God-given position. So that's what we're going to dive into today. So the first thing that we have to look at when we think about making this transition from being a man that's living on accident to being a man that's living on purpose is this. We've got to look at the barriers that some of us are facing. The barriers are so key. You think about it. There's a reason that we're probably not where we want to be at right now in life. When I thought over the last five years of my life and just kind of waiting around and trying to figure out what I was doing and trying to figure out where I was going, one of the things that I realized was that there were some barriers that I was dealing with in my life. And these barriers, oftentimes, they're roadblocks. They're roadblocks that keep us from point A to point B. And more importantly, I feel like those barriers are the roadblocks that keep us from living our full potential as men in this world. Here's the reason that that happens. One of my favorite authors, Zig Ziglar, said, don't become a wandering generality. Be a meaningful specific. So the barriers that you and I are facing in life sometimes are caused by, by not being specific on where we want to be and where we want to go. If you think about this, when there's no goals in your life, if there's no aim in your life, then what's really the purpose of getting excited? What's really the purpose of waking up in the morning? What's really the purpose of, of, of just trying your hardest and doing your very best when there's no real definite aim or definite goal that we're facing? And Zig Ziglar said it best. A lot of times we can become wandering generalities. We're walking around in life and not having a specific aim in life. And this is the first barrier that you and I face, really just choosing to be who we want to become. Choosing to be the man that you want to be, choosing how you want to show up in the world is oftentimes one of the first barriers that we see. And that's one of the barriers that I face personally in my own life. But when I made the mindset shift to say, you know what, I'm going to decide how I'm going to show up in the world, things started to change. Let's move on. 
So let's look at our brain. We're talking about barriers. Everything that I feel like we struggle with as men, for the most part, starts right up here between these two ears. Everything is mindset. Think about this. When you see talks and you hear things, and if you're watching this video and you're into this type of content, I know you're probably out looking and seeing how you can shift your mindset because a lot of the things that we deal with barrier-wise within our life comes from our mindset. Those mindset shifts or those mindset issues, rather, that we have, you know, they can come from so many different places, right? It could come from our past trauma as a man. Now, I've been diving into learning, exploring, understanding my own personal past trauma, how I was raised, things that may have happened to me as a young man, and how they're now affecting me 40 years later. These are some past traumas. Listen, brother, if you are dealing with some of the issues that you're dealing with today, it's probably a good chance that some of those things are spawned from what you experienced in your past, right? Some of the ways that we were brought up, some of the things that we experienced, yes, those things were meant to be disciplinary, but a lot of times they were borderline abuse and you know they, they affect us now growing up as men. So these past traumas, we really gotta evaluate them. Now I'd recommend, and this is what I personally did, was to seek professional help when it comes to that, if it's past traumas that are holding you back. Seek a therapist, seek somebody that's a professional that you can talk to and that you can learn from because look, they'll be able to help to, to break down those issues that you're facing and help you kind of get back on the right path and change some of those mindset shifts. Secondly, we got to think about the fact that there's a lot of men that are out there that they're struggling with a lack of encouragement. Maybe they don't have anybody pushing them or giving them the support that they need. This is a real thing, right? If you're a man and you're out there and you're trying to make um, the best use of what you have and you're trying to make the best use of your skills and your talents, but you have nobody pushing you and nobody coaching you along, it's going to be hard. That's why we have developed and started this community where we can connect with other guys to be able to help bring that encouragement that we all need. We all need that encouragement. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how you know tough you might think you are. There's going to be times where you're going to need that encouragement. You're going to need somebody to help you move along, right? Or maybe here's another barrier that you might be facing. Nobody taught you as a man how to execute. Nobody taught you how to move a situation from point A to point C to point Z, whatever the case is. Sometimes we're not taught as men how to literally execute from one point to another point. I learned this personally in the military. I'm a prior veteran. Before joining the military, I didn't realize that it, that I didn't really have the skill set that I needed in order to take a problem and to take a situation to critically think about that problem and situation and move myself from one point to a destination that was favorable favorable to me. Right? So there's a lot of men out there that we are not taught how to execute properly. We're not taught how to move things along within our lives. And these are the things that can hold us back. And these are the reasons why sometimes we'd rather just sit back and just let life happen to us because we don't know how to execute. The last barrier that we men face sometimes is, is this issue of fear, right? Fear. My biggest issue that I faced, and I realized that this year was growing up, you know, we had hard times growing up. So I would constantly see, you know, my dad working hard. Probably a lot of the reason I have the work ethic that I have today is because of seeing my father getting up early in the morning, running paper routes, um, doing what he had to do to provide, coming home, spending time with the family, washing the dishes, you know, washing the clothes, doing all these different things. My dad constantly and consistently showed me what it was to be a hard worker and the importance of it. The problem that I seen though growing up was that even though he was a hard worker, even though he had these things that 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 were great as far as characteristic traits, there were many times in our lives that we had to live without. There were many times in our lives where we had to move from house to house and staying with different people and and being in different places and and you know just just going through these difficult times financially and I couldn't wrap my mind around how is it that you have a man that works so hard and that is putting in all this effort but yet at the same time somebody can still come and snatch that away from you. Somebody can just come up and take your home. Somebody can come up and just take your car. 
because of whatever the case may be. And so I developed this fear that if I work hard, and this was a pattern that I was, was constantly exhibiting in my life over the years, I would work hard, work hard, work hard, build something up. I've started businesses. I've been, you know, pastoring for, you know, nearly a decade. I've done all these different things and I work hard, work hard, work hard. And then I get to a point just where things are starting to really start picking up momentum and picking up steam. And then I start backing off. I start slacking. I stop doing the things that I know are going to make me successful because somewhere in the back of my psyche, I, I, I had this belief that if I worked really, really hard based on what I seen growing up, that if I worked really, really hard, that somebody could always come and take that away from me. And so instead of trying to push myself to really achieve the greatness that I knew that I could become, I would always pull back and not allow myself to really hit my full potential and stride because of that fear of somebody coming to take something away from me. Now, if you grew up in that type of environment, man, I'm sure you could probably understand where I'm coming from and seeing, you know, where I'm going. Um, but that's fear. This fear. And look, as a man, these fears, what they can do oftentimes, man, these barriers rather, they can make us feel like we just can't catch a break in life. I don't know if you're a man out there and you've ever been in a season of life where you're just like, man, bro, I can't even catch a break, man. It seems like, you know, I might take one step forward, but now something to come around, knock me back and take me two steps back. Right. I might, you know, you know, get a job promotion, but something over here might happen. I might, you know, be 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 able to connect with somebody I want wanting to connect with relationships going good, but then something else will pop up. It's like you, you just feel like you can't catch a break. A lot of times those things happen because of these barriers that we have happening in our lives. Men oftentimes think that just bad things are always happening to them, right? And bad things that are, this is their mindset. This is how they think. And guess what? If I constantly think that bad things are going to always happen to me, guess what's going to happen? Bad things. I'm just going to continue. We are walking magnets walking around here and the universe, life, God, however you want to call it, whatever you want to look at it, it it only lives by an eternal law that says you will attract the thing that you are putting out. Like attracts like. So if I'm constantly thinking those type of thoughts, those type of habits, guess what I'm going to only bring into my life is those type of situations. This is what it looks like to live a life on accident. When bad things always happen, all these different things are happening. If you take a step back and you realize, okay, what's my thoughts? Like, how am I thinking? What's my mindset like? And you'll probably be able to realize and kind of dig a little bit deeper and see that the root of a lot of the things and the issues that we're facing is a mindset that we're having. So these are the barriers that we face. So moving on, when we think about that, if those are the barriers that we face, the good news is, is that even though, even though we may be blocked in those areas, a simple mindset shift can have a huge impact in your life. A simple mindset shift can have a huge impact in your life. And that's our second step. Number one, we've identified the barriers. We've identified and taken a step back. What are the things holding me back? Identifying them, right? Using our critical thinking, learning what the things are that are holding me back, maybe asking those around me that I trust, that I love, that I appreciate, hey, what are the things that you see in my life that I need to improve on and need to get better at? And then now we're going to make that shift and move into the second phase of this, which is the shift of our mindset. The mindset shift right here is so key. If we could really, as men, realize that the majority of the experiences and the situations that we have in our life stem from the way that we think, it would be so much easier for our lives to change into the, what, the life that we want, right? See, I live by this motto, when we change, when you can change the way you look at things, everything you look at begins to change, right? You can change what your current circumstance is by taking a hold and making it a habit of changing our mindset when it comes to the perspective and the way that we look at things. We have to understand that in order for us to move as a man from a man that's letting life just happen to me 
a man that's just letting things just happen and living accidentally. In order for me to change that, I have to change the way I'm thinking and how I'm looking at my problems, my situations, my relationships, my money, everything. I'm changing the way that I look at things. This is the second most crucial key here is the mindset shift is what we need to be after if we want to start living on purpose, right? So that change, what does it require? It requires us to learn how to be self-aware, right? What are some of the habits that you have as a man, the habits of mind rather that are holding you back as a man? What are some of the things and the ways that you think about other people, about your situations, about your money, about your relationships? What are the ways that you think about that? And begin, I look at it this way. I like to be a master surgeon of my thoughts. You think about surgery, right? You think if you ever had to go into surgery, you don't want a doctor or a surgeon going in to operate on you on a very sensitive part of your body that is not a master in really performing that surgery. You wouldn't want a, a, a brain surgeon that is not a, a master at the tools that he uses performing um, brain surgery on you. You'd be afraid of that. So why as men do we allow our thoughts to just run like wild weeds? And then we wonder why things in our lives aren't working the way that they are. Our mindset, we have to pay attention to those thoughts. We have to be, be able to hold those thoughts. You know, the Bible talks about taking every thought into captivity. Taking, think about what a captive is. A captive is somebody that was running free, doing whatever they wanted, that was taken into some type of custody. This is the same approach that we have to have with every single one of our thoughts. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, foo-foo stuff and everything. I'm just talking about simple, literally looking at our thoughts, observing our thoughts, selecting which thoughts we want to keep, which thoughts we want to discard. Now, I'll be honest with you, making that mindset sh shift, it, it, it may not be easy in the beginning, but with practice, it can become a habit. See, that's what I'm looking at here. And that's what we need to focus on is how do we make those different mindset shifts a habit of our thought process? How do we make that a habit of, of the way that we're thinking and the way that we're viewing the world? And so as we move on, this is going to require us oftentimes to just be flexible, right? As a man, you got to be flexible. You got to understand that it's important for us to be flexible with others. And it's more important for us to be flexible with ourselves right now. I'm not saying when we make this mindset shift, we start making these shifts within our lives. You know, it's going to require us to have some type of level of self-compassion, especially if we've been living life as a man, not feeling like we had purpose, not feeling like we could do anything, not feeling like we could achieve anything. We have to just be passionate or compassionate with ourselves and work with where we are, within ourselves. And so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's the first step here is that self-compassion. It's also going to require some patience, right? If you've been wandering around, wandering around for a long, long time, you know, it may take some time for things to turn around. It may, it may take some time, some time for, for, um, you know, our, 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 the life to change in the way that you may think that, that you want it to change, right? It may take some time for you to start seeing those results. When you think about one of the examples I've always thought about was, you know, when you hear the story about how a bamboo tree grows, a bamboo tree, you know, it, 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 it'll stay under the ground for like seven years, not even looking like anything's coming up. And then when it finally breaks ground, it shoots up and grows so fast. It's the same thing with our thoughts. It takes time for us to begin to have those mindset shifts of perf purposeful living on a consistent basis in order for our lives to really begin to change and our lives to really begin to reflect that. Right? So the mindset shift, changing the mind, work on the mind, man, work on the mind. It's one of the keys to us being able to grow and live as a man. So going back to where we're at right now, right? So we're said that we started off with the barriers. We identified some of those barriers. What do those barriers look like in your life? Secondly, we're moving on to the mindset shift. We're, we're learning how to shift the mind. We're learning how to, to shift those thoughts. Next, we're going to be going to look at the tactics. What are some tactics? I'm tactical. I'm pr prior military. I like to think things through tactically, right? Because that's how, you know, you're, you're kind of taught how to, to move, how to, um, 
communicate how to get things done is in a tactical way. So that's how I want to do it with you. This, 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 on this, this, um, on this video is, is what are some of the tactics that we can implement for purpose, for purposeful living? What are some of those tactics? Number one, the power of choice, man, you just got to freaking choose, bro. You got to choose. I've heard it. I think it may have been Jay Prince. I heard him say this in an interview. He said, every day you have a choice and a chance and you need to use them both wisely. Bro, you just got to freaking choose. Choose who you want to be, man. Choose who you want to be. Look, I thought about this for the last five years of my life. I've been allowing everybody else around me. I've been allowing my environment. I've been allowing people around me to dictate who I'm going to be as a man rather than me just making the choice, bro. Just make the choice. Say in your mind, look, this is who I'm going to be. Write it down. Write it down. Write, write it. Write it out, which kind of ties into my next point, right? Write it out. Start with those goals of choice. This is who I'm going to be. This is how I'm going to show up in the world. I know it sounds simple and people are like, oh, well, it can't be that easy. But look, when you think about this, your life could be revolutionized if you would sit and take the time to write down who you want to become. On this channel, I've done so many different things, talked about a lot of different things. And I finally sat down and I said, you know what, God, this is what I want to be. I want to be a man that helps other men by serving them to find the path to live on purpose to live in their power and to live in their God given position. I said, God, that's who I want to be. I want to be that type of man. And guess what ends up happening? Things begin to start aligning. Relationships become to start coming out of nowhere. Things and thoughts and ideas that I didn't really have before. Maybe I had them, but I never, they weren't at the forefront of my mind begin to pop up because I just made a choice, make a choice of who you want to become and watch how your life begins to change. Then, like I said, secondly, start with those goals, write them down. The, the process I follow is smart goals. People have heard of this. Ain't nothing new. Make sure it's specific. Make sure it's measurable. Make sure it's attainable. Make sure it's realistic and make sure it's time sensitive. Those five things. Right. And then the last part, the last tactic is to put some deadlines on it. Give yourself a sense of freaking urgency, man. Give yourself a sense of urgency. I currently work in a position where I help families who had somebody that passed away and I help them organize those things, get things in order. And when you're working in that type of environment, you realize time is not as, we don't realize sometimes how much time we have available left on this earth. So work and move with some freaking urgency because you're not sure what time that you have left on this earth. And so if we can have some urgency, we can put some deadlines on it. We can say, you know what? I'm going to work so hard in 2023 to become the man that I know that I can be. Watch how your whole life will pre pretty much change because we're not sure. We are not sure what time we have available in those things. So put a deadline on it. Last thing, get some accountability. Get some brothers around you that you admire, some people around you that 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 you know will hold you accountable. Man, hit me up. Drop a comment down below. I'll help hold you accountable. I'll help keep you pushing because my goal and my thing is this, is if I can help you to become the best version of yourself, that only not just helps your life, but it helps this whole world. It helps me as well, too, because it makes an impact on your life. So having that accountability is so, so key. So those things right there tactics for a purposeful life. We're talking about the power of choice. We're talking about starting with those goals. We're starting about, we're talking about putting some deadlines on it and then getting some accountability. The Bible says, Proverbs 27 verse 17 says that iron sharpens iron, iron sharpens iron. So get some people, get some men around you that you know you can trust. So let's move on. Let's wrap this on up. Here we go. Last thing, last topic. We're talking about the results of a purposeful life, the results of a purposeful life. What can we expect when we start living life on purpose as a man? What are the things that we can begin to expect? Number one, we live with excitement. We live with excitement. Listen, let me tell you, life hits completely different when you have something to wake up and look forward to. When you have something to wake up and say, man, I'm about to live this life on purpose. I'm about to make an impact in this world. I'm about to do some things that I didn't think I could do before because I now I know who I want to be. I've made a choice. I've wrote some goals. I've gotten myself on these tactics. I put some deadlines on it and I got brothers around me that are helping me to achieve these goals. Life hits completely 
different. The moments of my life when I've been the most excited and passionate about life was the moments in my life when I knew I was living on purpose, when I knew that I was in that mode of being on purpose, right? Secondly, a purposeful life is a powerful life, right? Men, oftentimes we walk around, we feel powerless because we don't have anything to look forward to. We feel weak because we don't have anything to look forward to. We feel hopeless because we don't have anything pushing us and, and pressing us to become better. Look, when, when we start living life on purpose, guess what happens? We start feeling like we can live a powerful life. Third, it inspires us to do something bigger than yourself. One of the things that I've recently learned in my life, and I think it's so important for us to hold on to, is that, look, men, every single man that comes out of the womb and enters into this world, he has to find a purpose in something bigger than himself. He's got to find a responsibility bigger than himself. Why? Because when I find something bigger than myself to focus on, when I find something that can push me, it's going to stretch me. It's going to show me the capabilities that I didn't think I had, and it's also going to show me my capacity. I can handle so much more than I think I can handle when I have that responsibility. Every man has to find that. Every man has to search for that responsibility, that weight in their life. And lastly, it helps you to believe in yourself. This is where we're really trying to get to the crux of how can we believe in ourselves? As we're looking at this, we're examining this. This is where we're at as men. These, these four simple steps that you and I can take, we can go from a man that's living on accident, letting life happen to us, to go to a man that's living on purpose and letting life happen for us. We identify the barriers, we shift the mindset, then we employ those simple tactics like I spoke about. Choose who you want to become, set some goals, put some deadlines on it, and get some accountability. And then we're going to see the results of being a purposeful man living on purpose purpose. Now, that's all I got for you today. Look, drop a comment down below. Maybe I want to know from you, what's the biggest challenge that you're facing right now in your life on being a man that lives on purpose? Drop a comment down below. And then also in the description, you can book a 15 minute call with me. I'll have a link down there where we can book a call, get on a Zoom call and just ask those questions. What are some of the challenges that we face? Because my goal, like I said, my passion here is to help men just like you to discover their path, to live in their purpose, to live in their power, and to live in their God-given position. So this has been Nick with the Life Recreated channel, man. Until next time, keep learning, keep healing, and keep growing.